Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It is morning over here for me, so good morning. I figured today we would do a what I eat in a day video because it's been a while since I've done one of these and they are being heavily, heavily requested. So let's just do one again. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin and I don't diet. I don't count anything. I don't moralize food. The goal of these videos is never to make you feel bad about what you eat or anything like that. It really is just to prove that you can have food freedom and a healthy relationship with food when you used to struggle because I'm someone who used to have several different eating disorders and I'm recovered and I'm really proud of that. So anyway, after that little spiel, I figured we would make one of my favorite loaves this morning. This is one of those recipes that like I thought about gatekeeping for a while and then I was like why would I do that? I would want everyone to eat this recipe all the time because it's so good. And we are going to be making my donut loaf. I've shared this recipe on TikTok and people went feral for it. A lot of people made it. They loved it. It's a little bit polarizing sometimes because this loaf that we're going to make this morning tastes exactly like a cinnamon old-fashioned donut and not everyone likes those kinds of donuts. Some people find them plain or a little bit boring or whatever it might be. Uh, so if those donuts aren't your thing, this recipe probably is not gonna be your thing. But if you love them, like I love them, and you're obsessed with cinnamon and cinnamon sugar and it's just amazing, this is gonna be for you. So let's start cooking. It's been so long since I've done a cooking video, I've gotta like get back into it. By the way, the recipe for this is going to be linked down below. But the first thing that you're going to add to your bowl is three cups of flour. Next up is one cup of granulated sugar. I swear, when I say that these taste like old fashioned donuts, it's, it's identical, it's amazing. Two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. When I made this recipe on TikTok, so many people were upset that I wasn't using like real measuring spoons, but it works out and it still tastes really good. Next, you're going to add some nutmeg and this is a little bit to like your flavor palette, but I usually add in around two teaspoons or so, maybe a little bit more. A little bit of salt. Going to give this a mix and because of the nutmeg, it already smells so freaking good. Next up, we're adding in two eggs. And you can just add them straight in the bowl. You don't need like a wet and dry ingredients bowl, not today. Next up, we need a cup and a quarter cup of milk. I'm a little bit low today on milk, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water as well. And then the last thing that we're going to add is just some melted butter, probably around six tablespoons. And now we're just going to mix that all together. All right, so we just finished with the dough. It literally took me 10 minutes to do, if that. And your dough should not look like other kind of loaf batters. Like it shouldn't look like banana bread batter or like carrot cake batter or anything like that. It should really look like a mixture between bread dough and cake batter to where it's like super thick um, and ball-y. I don't know, is that, a, is that a way to describe it? But that's what you want because it's going to be like a bread loaf, right? We're trying to make like a donut loaf, so. Keep that in mind, but I'm going to put this into a grace, a graced, a graced baking sheet, a baking sheet. Oh my goodness, a greased baking pan. It's been a while since we've done this. We've got to do more, and we'll stick it into the oven, and then we'll try it when it comes out. So I have some really exciting news as well. Yesterday I took my theory test for my license, and I passed. So I'm so excited because I just have the in-car test, and then I have my license if I pass, hopefully. And I'm just really, really excited. But while I went to my test after Andrew and I got Starbucks and I got the oat brown sugar shaken espresso, and it was so good. And so we're gonna make it at home. I have a client very soon. So we're gonna make this quick, but I just take a little mason jar or any sort of container that you can put like a top on. And I'm going to add in two shots of espresso. I made this homemade brown sugar syrup yesterday. It's just brown sugar, maple syrup, a little bit of water, and I boiled it with a cinnamon stick. I didn't do any measurements, but the next time I make it, I will. And I'm not really sure how much to add, so I think I'm just going to start with one spoonful. Maybe a little bit more. I feel like I like my drinks a little bit sweet. Then I'm just going to add a little pinch of cinnamon. Not too much, like just, just a little bit. 
Gonna add a little bit of ice in there just to shake it up, but we're gonna add more later. Give it a good shake. Then once you're done shaking it, it should look something like this. Some more ice. And then I'm just going to top it off with some of this vanilla oat milk. This is the first time I'm making one of these at home in a long time, so let's see how we did. It is so good. It's not identical, and I'm pretty sure the biggest factor is the fact that I used um, vanilla oat milk, but it is so freaking close. And this also just didn't cost me $7 to make, which I appreciate, so. Anyway, I'm gonna go do my client call, drink this, and then we'll be back right after to do that taste test for breakfast. So the loaf is going to come out any minute, but I just got a box, so I figured we'd unbox it together. I ordered a bunch of books. Right now I'm reading The Heights, I think that's what it's called, by Louise Candlish, I think. Anyway, I'm only like 40 pages in and it's pretty good so far. And I'm thinking of doing maybe like a Patreon book club. I don't know if people would be interested in that, but I think it could be fun. Okay, I mainly got thrillers because that's my favorite thing to read and life's too short to not read the books that you want to read. But I did pick up A Little Life. This has been recommended to me a lot. One of my friends read it and she really, really liked it. This is like huge trigger warning for this book. There's so many trigger warnings that I can't even list. So look them up if you do decide to read this. But I believe it's like a coming of age story or like a retelling of somebody's life. So I'm excited to read it, but it is fiction. I feel like this cover makes it look like it's nonfiction, but it's fiction. And we got some more. So I've read every single one of Riley Sager's books, except for these two. So I picked them up. This one, oh, do I know this? No, I thought I read this book for a second, but I read a book called Sometimes I Lie, and this is called The Last Time I Lied. Different books, lots of lying in the thriller genre. But I picked up this one. And then the next Riley Sager book, and Sager, I think that that's how you say it, is called Survive the Night. And again, I've read all of the books from this author and some of them I really loved and I thought the twist was great. And then other ones, it was just like, okay, kind of mediocre. So I'm not really sure what to expect. It can go either way for these books. And then I got two more, again, both thrillers. This one is called In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead or Winstead, I don't know. I basically was on TikTok and was looking at books that had like twists and these are some that came up. This one is about six friends with a college reunion and an unsolved murder. It's right up my alley. And then this last book is called Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. I read Behind Her Eyes, which I also believe is from this author, which is a great book, lots of twists. And yeah, I'm excited about this. I have insomnia, so I'm not sure if this book is going to spook me out a little bit, but we'll just have to wait and see. But that's my book haul. But now let's eat that loaf because I'm hungry and we're gonna eat right now. <laughs> Look at how gorgeous our loaf is. It is time that we jazz her up though and add her finishing touches. The first thing that you're gonna do is just take a little bit of butter and you're just going to coat her all over. Okay, so now that she is beautifully coated, I'm going to just make a cinnamon sugar mixture, which is literally just sugar and the amount of cinnamon that you'd like. And you're going to sprinkle that on top of the butter. It's a little bit messy at first, but that's okay because we can always clean things up. I've been craving this literally all week, so I'm so glad that I get to share the recipe with you today and that I had all of the ingredients. But let's cut a piece off of the end over here. Oh my God, this smells so good. I don't even know if you can see all of the steam coming off of it, but oh my God. It's probably too hot to try right now, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Cause again, this is one of my favorite things ever. Hold on, my robot vacuum turned on. You're gonna hear my robot vacuum for a second, but this is literally the best thing ever. When you heat it up and you add a little bit of butter, 
Oh my God. This is the best thing I've eaten all week. Oh my God. Anyway, I'm going to eat some of this delicious loaf for breakfast and I'm gonna see you later for lunch. Hello? Oh my goodness. Hello friends. It's later and we're going to make some lunch. I showered. I also have a bunch of hair oils and hair treatment in my hair. So we're, we're doing a self care PJ kind of vibe today. And for lunch today, I'm going to try a new recipe. So I've never made it. I don't know if it's any good, but we're going to make some salmon in the air fryer. And I'm going to make like a marinade with a little bit of QP mayo and some spices to cover it. And then we're going to put some panko crumbs on it and bake it in the air fryer. I saw it on TikTok, but I can't find the original creator or video, but that is where my, but that is where my inspiration is coming from today. And not a day goes by in the summer where I do not crave a Greek salad. So I took out all of the ingredients and we're gonna make some Greek salad too. But first things first, let's get everything in order for this bad boy. So I'm going to make my little sauce in this container and we're going to start off with some QP mayo. I don't really know how much I need, so we're just going to kind of eyeball it. So around that much. I'm going to add some garlic powder, a little bit of salt, pepper, a little bit of cayenne just for like a little bit of a kick. I don't like things too, too spicy, but it's good. And then just a little bit of parsley. This adds just a nice color, to be honest. So I'm going to put my salmon skin side down on some tin foil because this is gonna go in my air fryer for like an easier cleanup. And I'm just going to poke some holes in my salmon so as it cooks, the marinade can get there in, can get there in, can get in there as well. Now for our sauce, I'm just gonna give it a good mix. And we're just going to coat our salmon again. I've never done this, so I don't really know how it's going to turn out, but I have really, really high hopes. So let's spread this on. I'm convinced that people who don't like salmon have just never had it prepared correctly, but at the same time, there's tons of things that I don't like. So maybe people just really don't like salmon and that's okay. <laughs> okay, so we have one more step to making this meal and we're going to need some panko breadcrumbs. I put around two teaspoons of butter in this little ramekin and we're going to melt it. Okay, and to my melted butter, we're just going to add the panko crumbs. And I know that a lot of my recipes are really kind of go with the flow, measure with your heart. Those are just the recipes I really like to recreate. I know that some people like a lot of structure but trust yourself, okay? Trust yourself a little bit more. Time to sprinkle this on the fish. And now I'm just going to stick this in the air fryer for around six to seven minutes. I'm going to tell you something that I wish someone had told me during my eating disorder recovery journey. You're going to make mistakes and you can't follow a day one mentality. Recovery is a journey. And if you think you won't make mistakes along the way, you're already setting yourself up for failure. Recovery isn't like dieting. If you don't do well one day, that doesn't take away from all of your progress and there's no system in place for you to feel shame other than the system that we've created. Having bad days is part of recovery. Give yourself permission to have those days. Be curious about them. Try your best not to punish yourself for things that are outside of your control. Being bad or confused is part of the recovery process because perfection doesn't exist anywhere. It's always got to do the taste test bite, you know? Mm. 10 on 10. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, but you just, you can't go wrong with a classic Greek salad. Um, okay. Can we just look at how beautiful that fish looks? And the salad, I love seeing all of those colors. It just makes me so happy, especially in the summertime. But let's try it. The most important thing is that we like it. All right, so we have our fish and our salad. I'm so excited. My expectations are probably too high for this fish. I'm looking at it and it looks heavenly. I almost always overcook my salmon in the air fryer by accident and I don't like overcooked salmon. So I'm hoping that this Turns out okay. If you don't like salmon, or you've tried it and you're just like, 
not crazy about it, but you wanna give it another go just to see what's up, just to try this recipe, I'd recommend it. Mmm, it's so buttery and soft. And you have like a little bit of tang from the marinade that we made, plus the crunchy breadcrumbs or panko crumbs. I'm gonna be making this on repeat. It's delicious. Mmm. Anywho, I'm gonna have some of this, and I have another client call in an hour, and then we'll we'll see what's up and what we're gonna do next. Mm. Hello friends, so I just finished work for the day and I'm currently snacking on my favorite fruit ever, which is some watermelon before I make some dinner. I don't really know what I wanna make tonight. I was thinking of like mac and cheese, but I don't have the noodles that I want. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. I'm like craving a specific like noodle for macaroni and cheese and I just, I don't have that. So I'm snacking on some of this and I think I'm just gonna make some more Greek food. I'm not gonna make another Greek salad, okay? I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit interesting for all of you, but I do have some chicken kebabs that I have in the freezer, not in the freezer, in the fridge, that I can throw on the barbecue and make those with some like tzatziki and warm pita bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that sounds really good. And also really easy because I literally only have to barbecue the meat and that's it, everything else is basically done. And I love an easy, quick dinner. I'm still snacking on watermelon and I did finally decide to have these chicken gyros for dinner and the barbecue's heating up right now. And I just have these like pre-marinated chicken skewers from the grocery store. Don't even wanna talk about the price, $20. The groceries or like the price of groceries has just skyrocketed recently. It's insane. Like you just get a couple of things and it's like $100. It's ridiculous. But anyway, I digress. I'm gonna cook these up. These are like the Chipotle flavor. And I'll show you when my plate is all put together. Hey Tabasco, you wanna say hi? <gasps> You wanna say hi? It's been so so long since you've been in the vlog. My good boy. And Harley is just eating his dinner over here. Hey baby. Good boy. Oh, I love you guys so much. So much. <gasps> my, my pride and joy. My pride and joy. Alright, to make the best pita, I think I barbecued this for a little bit too long. You need to add the juiciest chicken. There's just nothing like barbecue chicken in the summertime. It's just, it's my favorite thing. I have lots of favorite things and that's okay. The most important ingredient, like even more important than the chicken is the garlic sauce, the tzatziki. And I put so much of it because I love it, but you can put whatever amount floats your boat for the best chicken pita out there. Of course, some lettuce and some onion. I'm going to watch The Vampire Diaries as I eat this and I'm so excited. No one can tell me that that's not a good looking pita. Oh my gosh, it's just missing some tomatoes but I'm too lazy to cut them up because I forgot. Oh my goodness, this lighting, very interesting. But let's take a bite. This looks incredible. I love pita so much and I think if I could only eat one food for the rest of my life, it would be this or cheese and crackers or bagels. <laughs> but like, this would be up there for sure. Mm. This is heaven in my mouth. By the way, it's rude of me to talk with my mouth full. I'm sorry. When I make videos like this, like what I eat in a day or what I eat in week videos, do you like seeing me eat the foods and like taste test them and things like that? Or do you just wanna like see what I'm having for inspiration? But yeah let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video. I think that that's going to be it for me today. And if not, I'll insert another clip right here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm still actively working on my mental health, so I'm trying to post as frequently as I can, which will change week to week. But I love you, and I hope that you are treating yourself with love today. And if not, make sure to do at least one kind thing for yourself, okay? Okay, bye friends.